the day that the Lord has made, and we should rejoice and be glad in it. It may be a little gloomy in your neck of the woods, but we are here to put a little sunshine and joy into your day. Today's worship is just for you. Today's word is just for you. Today's service is especially crafted just for you. It's time to worship. Despite what you may have gone through in the past week, stand to your feet and worship God with us because he deserves all the honor and all the glory and all the praise. center of it all Jesus at the center of it all from beginning to the end it will always be it's always been you Jesus Jesus center of it all. Oh Lord, Jesus at the center of it all. From beginning to the end. My God, it will always be. It's always been you. Zombie. 
the name, the name of Jesus, is higher than other names, King of all things.
indeed a privilege to be here this morning to be able to minister to you thus said the Lord amen thank God to be here amen thank God for you hallelujah we're gonna go right into the word amen before we do that amen I just want you to bow your hearts on, on your heads and let's pray this morning in Jesus name father we thank you and we give you praise and and honor because of who you are. You are God and beside thee there is no other. And Father, this morning, I pray, O oh God, that you're going to anoint me, O oh God, with your precious blood, O oh God. Father, you're going to use me to be able to share with your people, O oh God. Lord, you're going to allow me to be able to speak, O oh God, that what you desire me to speak this morning in the name of Jesus. Let your Holy Spirit just take full control, O oh God. In the name of Jesus. Bless your people, O oh God, and allow them to be able to receive your word. In Jesus' name we thank you. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Thank God this morning. Amen. I was asked to minister on worship this morning. Worship and the word. Amen. But I want to change it up a little bit this morning. I want to say true worship. True worship. Because, you know, sometimes when we think of worship, we expect the worshipers to come for them with nice songs and, and, and stuff to be able to, to get us in that place. And amen. Hallelujah. But this morning, I want to share with you about true worship, about how we ought to worship God and, and, and the place that we ought to be when we worship. Hallelujah. When we think of the word worship, amen, we, we think of reverencing God, showing reverence to God. Hallelujah. And that is what worship is all about. We show reverence to God. So that means that we have to be in a certain place to be able to show reverence to Him. We can't come, you know, just because we know we have to be in the presence of the Lord, but we have to come people. Yeah, amen. Because we are coming to worship, to show reverence to God. Amen. Hallelujah. And we, the scripture is going to be taken from John chapter 4. John chapter 4, we're going to read from verse 21. A very familiar passage of scripture. And it says, Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh. When ye shall neither in this mountain, nor yet at Jerusalem, worship the Father. Ye worship ye, yea, you know not. We know what we worship, the scripture says. For salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh, and is now, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit, and in truth, for the Father seeketh such worship, 
Him. Amen. God is a spirit, and they that worship must worship Him in spirit and in truth. Amen. We see here, God is speaking to the woman at the well. Amen. The Samaritan woman. Amen. And to her, her ancestors, I just say, were worshiping God the right way. But Jesus met with her and, 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 and told her, listen, you all don't know who you're worshiping. You don't know what you're worshiping. You don't know how to worship. Amen. And he says in verse 23, but the hour cometh and is now when the true worshipers, true worshipers, we're talking about here this morning, shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. You know, when we think about worship also, we, we expect, as I said before, the singers, the worship leaders will come and sing and, and, and have nice songs. Hallelujah. You know, to bring us in that place. But it's not about that. Amen. It's about the spirit. You and me coming into, into the presence of God. Prepared, amen, to receive from God. So when we consider we preparing ourselves to receive from God, we have to be in a place. We cannot come just like that. We have to be in a certain place to be able to receive from God. So we thank God for the, the worshipers. Sometimes they really do a good, great job. You know, bring us in that place and oh, we feel so good. Amen. We thank God for them. And there are so many other ways when we read God's word, we worship in God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. When we sing in, we worship in God. But it's not just about that. Worship is more a lifestyle. Hallelujah. When we come into the presence of the Lord with our hearts prepared. Hallelujah. You know, like, like the day before, we prepare ourselves to receive from God the Sunday morning when we come, when we know we come in Sunday morning, we, we, we come, in, you know, with a, 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 a spirit to receive because we prepare ourselves to receive from Him. Hallelujah. And if we don't prepare ourselves, the Bible says in Revelation chapter 3, verse 15 and 16, talks about, talks about being hot and cold. Amen. And lukewarm. He said, if you're lukewarm, I'm going to spew you out of my mouth. The word of God tells us. He don't want us to be lukewarm. He wants us to be hot. He wants us to be on fire. So if we don't come in God's presence, hot. He's going to spew us out of his mouth. He prefer that we, either we hot or we cold. So when we come in his presence, you know, the, the word of God and, 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 and as they sing, the Spirit of God will minister to us. But if you're lukewarm, he said, he's going to spew you out of his mouth. And even, even 1 Corinthians chapter 13 talks about if you don't love your brother, if you don't have love in your heart, you'll become a sounding brass and a tingling cymbal. You say, Brother Dexter, Minister Dexter, how oh, 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 you're talking about love? We're talking about worship. Yeah, you come with love. Listen, it's one. It ties in together. You would see, you would see as we go on. He said, if you if you you come in the presence of God and you and your and your heart is not right and your heart is not prepared, you will just be making noise. He wants us to be prepared, he wants us to come in his presence. With a heart of worship, a heart of praise, knowing that God, He is God and He, there is no other beside Him. And He is able to make all things well. Hallelujah. Oh, glory be to God. We're talking about true worship here this morning. Talking about true worship, not just worship. You could raise your hand and, and sing and all that. No, true worship. Amen. Hallelujah. And to be able to to have true worship, we must have holiness. Amen. We must have holiness. First Peter chapter 1, verse 15. Amen. And we're going to read it. Amen. 
But as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. But it is written, be ye holy as I am holy. Amen. Reading down to verse 16. Amen. The Bible tells us to be holy, to be able for us to have true worship, brethren. We must live a holy life. We must desire to be holy. We must desire to walk as God has called us to walk. We can't just be living anyhow and expect to come in God's house to be able to have true worship. So to have true worship, amen, we must have holiness. We must live a holy life. We must do the things that Jesus Christ wants us to do. Hallelujah. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. We're talking about true worship. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. 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 Hebrews chapter 3, verse 1 to 2. Amen. It talks about faith. To be able to, to have true worship, we must have faith. Hallelujah. And it says, Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle, the holy priest of the op oppression, Jesus Christ, who was faithful to him that appointed him, as also Moses was faithful in all his house. Amen. Jesus Christ was faithful and he's calling us to be faithful to us for us to be able to have true worship. We must be faithful, brethren. We must be faithful. We can't afford to be up today and down tomorrow. We have to hold the fort, amen, in spite of the situation. We have to hold on, hallelujah, for us to be able to have true worship. We must be holy and we must be faithful, Hallelujah. Don't matter what comes our way. Don't matter what, what, what the enemy might bring. Hallelujah. We must be able to be faithful. Hallelujah. And to do what Christ has called us to do. Amen. We must not be weary, the Bible says, in well-doing. Hallelujah. We must not get discouraged. The word of God tells us, don't be discouraged. Hallelujah. So we must be holy. We must be faithful. Hallelujah. And another point says, we must be righteous. We must hunger and thirst for righteousness. Matthew chapter 5, verse 6 and to 8, amen. Hunger and thirst. We're talking about true worship, brethren. We must hunger and thirst for righteousness. As the song says, I hunger for righteousness. I hunger for holiness. Lord, I hunger. Hallelujah. Brethren, we have to have a desire. We must have a desire for God. If we, we desire to have true worship, we cannot not want to be like him. We cannot not want to, to, to do our own thing. We cannot, come on. We must be able to desire righteousness. We must be able to be holy. We must be able to, to be faithful. Hallelujah. If we want to have true worship with the man Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, glory be to God. Brethren, God loves us so much. Eh? He loves us so much because he didn't, he didn't have to die. He didn't have to die. Hallelujah. And he showed us how he was faithful. He showed us how he was holy. He lived a holy life. He could, have, he could have faltered. He could have failed. Because when the pressures of this world came upon him, he could have given up. But he didn't. Hallelujah. He kept the faith. Amen. Hallelujah. He held on because of you and me. Because he saw you and me. Amen. And because of that. Amen. We are able to hold on. We are able to make it. Don't get discouraged. Amen. Today we are faced with, with, with a, a, a pandemic, amen, that is causing us to, to be discouraged and to get weary. But I encourage you because your desire is to have true worship. Your desire is to do what he has called you to do. 
So I encourage you this morning, don't be discouraged. Don't be weary. Be faithful. Amen. Hunger and thirst for righteousness. Amen. Hallelujah. We must be as one. We must be as one. Hallelujah. To be able to have true worship. Remember I tell you, we're coming back to this thing called love. This thing that is so difficult for us to do, to love one another. Brethren, to have true worship, you must love your brethren. You must love your brethren. You must love. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter, chapter 18 verse 19 says, Again, I say unto you, that if two of you shall agree on the earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done of them, of the Father which is in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in, in my name, there I am in the midst of them. Amen. Brethren, we cannot do this thing alone, you know. We need each other to be able to have true worship. We need each other. Hallelujah. You remember in Acts chapter 2, the Bible talks about the apostles. They went into the upper room and they waited together. They were all in one mind, in one place. They waited. And the Bible talks about a fire came and rest upon them. Amen. And they began to speak with other tongues. Hallelujah. They were in one accord. They were together. For us to be able to have true worship, we must be in one accord. The Bible says if we, two of us, just two, we agree on touching anything, it shall be done. Just two. One can put a thousand to flight. Two can put ten thousand, the Bible says. Just two of us, amen, agreeing together. True worship, amen. We must be as one, amen. Hallelujah. First Corinthians, very uh, familiar passage of scripture, chapter 13. Hallelujah. For if we don't have love, we are sung in brass, brethren, and tingling cymbal. Oh, hallelujah. First John, chapter 4. Hallelujah. Verse 20 and 21. Hallelujah. We can't say we love God and we hate we brother. No. If we say we love God, we must love our brethren. We love, must love our brothers. Amen. So we must be one brethren. We must be able to, to, to love, to be able to have true worship. We must be one. Hallelujah. Just as the apostles were one. Amen. They were together and the spirit of God rest upon them. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Spirit of God rests upon them. And, and, and they begin to speak with other tongues. Hallelujah. And they begin to preach. Hallelujah. To, to, to the, you know, those that were in the, in the midst heard them. Hallelujah. They heard them. And, 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 and they, were, they were amazed. Heard them speaking in their own languages. Amen. And they were amazed. Amen. And they understood everything that they were saying. Because they were in one accord. For us to be able to have true worship, we must be in one accord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Another point is, we can't afford to be in the flesh. Can't afford to be in the flesh, brethren. Hallelujah. Philippians chapter 3, verse 3. For we are the circumcision which worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. Because we rejoice in Christ Jesus, we must not have no confidence in the flesh. Must not depend on this flesh because this flesh, the Bible says, it will fail us. The word of God talks about circumcision here and that word to circumcision it means 
a purification, a purifying yourself, clean, cleansing yourself. Brethren, we must be clean, hallelujah. We must be clean. We can't afford to allow this flesh to take over. We must be clean. We must purify ourselves to be able to have a relationship with Jesus. To be able to have true worship. To be able to, 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 to see him. Amen. We must, we must purify ourselves. Hallelujah. We must desire holiness. We must desire faithfulness. Hallelujah. We must, amen, we must. We can't afford to lapse. We can't afford to just think we can live anyhow, do anything, and expect true worship, and expect God to be pleased, amen. Because our worship, you know, will be going up to his, him in his nostril, a stink. We don't want our worship to, to, to go up before him, a stink, and, 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 and he, he, he discard it, Amen. Because we, we're not in the place, amen. We must be in the place where he wants us to be for that worship to go up before him as a sweet savor, amen. So that he may be able to dwell in our praises, to dwell. The Bible says he dwells in our praises. But if we're not living right and if we're not doing what we're supposed to do, how would he dwell? How would be, he would be able to, to, to enjoy our praise and, and to bask in our praise? Hallelujah. If we are not doing what we're supposed to do. We must worship God in spirit and in truth. He told the woman at the well, amen. Those that worship must worship in spirit and in truth. Not how they think. Not how they feel, but in spirit. Because why? He is a spirit. Because Jesus, he is a spirit. Hallelujah. He is the one, amen, that died on the cross. And on the third day, he rose again. Hallelujah. For us to be able to, to, to worship God, hallelujah, the way that we should. We must clean and ourselves. We must purify ourselves. We must desire to live holy. We must hold on. Hallelujah. Be faithful. We must hunger and thirst after righteousness. We must. Hallelujah. In John chapter 1, amen. Verse 17. For the law was given by Moses. But grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. But it's not just so, you know. He is truth. So if we say we serve in him, if we say we live in for him, we must do these things. Because why? We want to have true worship with him. We want to be able for him to say yes and enjoy our presence. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. We must say amen if we desire him to enjoy ourselves. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Because he is a spirit. He is a spirit. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians. Chapter 3, verse 14, amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. We'll read verse 15. But even unto this day, when Moses is read, the veil is upon the hearts. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be broken away, amen. Now the Lord is a spirit. And where the spirit is, there is liberty. Brethren, the Bible says where God's spirit is, we are free. We want to be able to worship God free. Amen. There is liberty. 
where the Spirit of God is. Hallelujah. We are free. True worship brings freedom. True worship brings, allows you to be free. Stand up anywhere and lift your hands and worship God. Not to be afraid. Hallelujah. Not to have fear, but to be able to worship Him in freedom. Hallelujah. True worship, brethren. True worship. Somebody said true worship. Oh, hallelujah. He was made, that spirit of God was made to quicken us. Quicken us. Oh, hallelujah. Brethren, hallelujah. It, it, that spirit is so sweet. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. That spirit is so sweet. It gives you joy. It gives you peace. The spirit of God. Hallelujah. Change you. Strengthens you. Keep you. The Spirit of God. Hallelujah. We are free to be able to worship God. We want to have true worship. We don't want to just come in the presence of God and just lift our hands and just clap. Praise the Lord. While the worship leader in front there, giving it all. And we just, sometimes we ain't even lifting our hands. We hand fold like that. Hallelujah. We don't even clap. Amen. Because why? You're in coming to the house of the Lord with that freedom. Hallelujah. With that desire, with that hungering and thirsting. You're not able to lift your hands freely. Brethren, if you want to be able to have true worship, you got to prepare yourself. This has nothing to do with the pastor or the bishop. This has nothing to do with the ministers or the worshipers. It's between you and God. Hallelujah. Each and every one of us have to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. Hallelujah. So if you want to please him with your worship, you have to prepare yourself. You have to be in that place where he wants you to be. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. True worship this morning. True worship, hallelujah. Desires holiness. Desires faithfulness. Desires hungering and thirsting after righteousness. Hallelujah. 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 Desires us to, 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 to be pure, to purify ourselves, to purge ourselves, to circumcise ourselves. True worship, amen. Hallelujah. True worship desires us to be as one together. When you, when you cause yourself to, 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 to be clean and to be, desire holiness, you become as one. Hallelujah. You become as one. You, and your you, 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 you brethren come into the house together. Each and, each and every one of us come in the houses together with one mind and one heart. The Spirit of God will be able to move in our presence. So brethren, I encourage us. I encourage us this morning to live holy as Jesus Christ desires us to be holy. Because we want to be able to have true worship. Oh, glory be to God. We want to be able to have true worship. I just want to read Galatians chapter 5. Hallelujah. Verse 1 says, Stand fast therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ has made you free. And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Brethren, don't get tangled up with the cares of what is taking, going on around you. Amen. Don't let it take over your mind and your heart. Amen. Verse 13 says, For brethren, you have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh. So don't use it when you, when you want something to happen. You know, something good to happen to you. Huh? But 
to worship God. Use your freedom to worship God. Not when you want good things. Not when you want God to, to bless you. But use it to worship God this morning. So this morning, I want to encourage you. Let's have true worship. Let's be in one mind. Let's be in one place. Let's desire holiness. Let's seek after faithfulness and righteousness. Let's desire to be pure. Because our aim is to have true worship. So when we come into the house of the Lord and the worshipers begin to sing, the power of God will just fall upon us. Because why? We are in one place. Having one mind. Having one desire. Amen. So Jesus Christ will be pleased with our worship. True worship. Hallelujah. Let's bow our hearts this evening. Father, we thank you this morning. We thank you because you care for us. God, this is the reason why you bring your word, oh God. You bring your word, oh God, so that we may be able to read your word and to understand what you desire of us. Father, help us today that we will desire holiness. We will desire faithfulness. We will desire to be pure, oh God. To love one another, to be together, hallelujah. To be righteous, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Because Lord, we want to be able, when we begin to worship you, our worship go up before you as a sweet savor. God, help us today. God, help our faults, help our failures today. Where we fall short, forgive us. In the name of Jesus. Purify us, oh God. Lord, whatever is holding us back from being able, from unable to, to, to have true worship, Father, Lord, remove it in the name of Jesus. Remove it in the name of Jesus. Anoint us with your precious blood, we ask this morning. In Jesus' name, we thank you. And God, we give you praise and we give you honor. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. God bless you this morning. God bless you. True worship in Jesus' name. On behalf of the leadership of the Bible Way Temple, Apostle Celestine Paul and Mother Eura Paul, we thank you for fellowshipping with us today. It's been a wonderful service, and we hope that you will be with us next Sunday. But don't forget, if you have not yet subscribed to our YouTube channel, click the red subscribe button that's at the bottom of this screen. For prayer and counseling, you can contact us on WhatsApp at 754-4270. Or if you would like to give a financial contribution to this ministry, you are free to make a direct deposit to our Scotiabank account, Bibleway Temple, account number 1200176. Once again, we thank you for joining us today and we hope that we can fellowship with you during the week and next week Sunday.